While we all enjoy moments of familiarity from time to time with our circles of friends and family and coworkers, constant familiarity, as Bill Birnbach, the most important and influential figure in the history of modern advertising, is quoted as saying, breeds apathy. Rallyists, I know, are quite enthusiastic about co-drivers they have a very close relationship with because, well, we can finish each other's sentences. However, since they can finish each other's sentences, what if one of them wants to change the ending of one of those sentences? A couple of the most successful U.S. rally teams in recent history consisted of truly odd couple partnerships. Take Travis Pastrana, the daredevil adrenaline junkie rally driver, now with NASCAR, teamed for four consecutive national championships with a big eight accounting firm partner named Christian Edstrom. You couldn't put two more different people in a race car. I co-drove for Matthew Johnson, and I was twice his age. We won the 2006 Production GT Championship. I also had the distinct pleasure of sitting with Chris Duplessy, and he was just a third my age when he finished up his 2008 Group 2 Championship. We couldn't have been more different. But in both cases, our communication was incredibly accurate, and the effort totally successful. Well, what's my point here? Being so familiar that we finish each other's sentences becomes a ritual. It blinds us and deafens us to important information, and as such, functions as a handicap. Where can this cause us problems? Well, certainly in a rally car at speed. In the, within the past year, I've had to bark, what part of right didn't you understand as my driver, very close friend, who just knew what I was going to say, turn left. At speed, on video, very embarrassing. But it can also cause problems in the workplace. For example, when we've worked for a boss long enough in order to operate efficiently, sometimes we're tempted to predict his or her requests. So much so that maybe we didn't even hear the details of that actual request. And we execute off our own prediction. That's often dangerous, both to the mission at the time and the relationship with the boss in the long run. And how about spousal familiarity? While it can be rewarding to be totally familiar with one spouse, it can also cause no end of misunderstanding due to familiarity dysfunction. Ever witness, you said blah, blah, blah. No, I did not. So you're not twice as old as your driver or of a different nationality. How can you stay present enough to actually hear everything that your boss or spouse or co-driver is trying to convey to you? I'll be the first to admit it's tough. But I like to put a little hesitation in between what's being said and my response. Just a half second or so gives my brain enough time to suggest that I may not have heard what I thought I was going to hear. If I have, then we're good. If I haven't, I can ask for clarification. Now, if I'm competing in a rally car at speed, it's probably too late. I better have heard it right the first time. I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver, and this is another moment of clarity. Mm.